Memphis is going to spend at least, according to the story, uh, there's several stories, including the News Observer, uh, spending, uh, not News Observer, the Memphis uh, uh, newspaper, spending at least $150 million to renovate, and I think Jack might even have some videos here, to, to uh, pictures, renovate what is the Liberty Bowl before the 2025 season. The renovation announced today could reach $200 million for Simmons Bank Liberty Stadium. Memphis studied options of renovating the current Liberty Bowl or building a new one. The renovation project could also help Memphis, in this report, be more attractive to a Power Five conference looking to expand into the future. We have discussed this many, many times. From Laird Veach, who I reached out to, the AD at Memphis, it will optimize our position in the rapidly evolving landscape of intercollegiate athletics in a more manageable, efficient time frame. This is the most strategically achievable option for us to pursue and make a game-changing impact at a critical time for our program. Yeah, the, the city of Memphis has made a lot of athletic upgrades around everything other than the Liberty Bowl, so it's, it's probably time for them to do that. And, and of course, Memphis is, was in a sticky wicket of not owning the Liberty Bowl. It's not their stadium. They have to, it was, you know, there's a lot of local things you have to go through, but looks look like it's going to be great. And, you know, Memphis, not a bit like, Again, we talked about them, you know, as part of the second wave of Big 12 expansion. Not a bad place for the Big 12 to go, uh, as considering all the stuff that you have there. And it's it's kind of a a little big city, Memphis is. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of sponsorship opportunities there when you talk about FedEx, DHL, all these other big companies that, that work and ship out of Memphis. So, yeah, I'm, I'm excited to see that. I'd love to go to a game there once it's done. I was in Memphis a year ago uh, and drove past the Liberty Bowl. And even driving past it, you think, like, Needs a, needs a coat of paint. Need a coat of paint. Maybe a little touch-up here and there. By the way, Tony Altamore on the text line, Craig is 100% right, except for one thing. He's totally right about the transferring issues. Historically, uh, the history has exact lessons for us. It's like when freshmen were declared illegal. Once that opened the door, then you weren't going to go back and shut that door because for a long time, you could not play as a freshman. And you wondered about that. Was that, was that because of safety? What was that? What was the reason for that? I think that I think part of that was that was where you went and stashed guys. I mean, it's, it helped yeah, you stash guys. Yeah, but it's Herschel Walker, and it was yeah. back before he could play. You don't want to. Yeah, I, I guess you got to play. You got to go somewhere and sit a year. Yeah. Um, and so that's there, that's a that's a. So what's the party disagrees with? History has exact lessons for us. I don't know if he's disagreeing. It's just said except for one thing. Yeah, history so I'm saying what's the one thing. Has exact lessons for us. It's like when freshmen were declared legal. I guess maybe he's saying that history doesn't matter. I don't know. Um, but I see where Gary Bard is coming from. I see his point. I do think it would probably help to slow down some of what's going on. But I think, again, he's focusing on, like, the five to ten players that have made this kind of crazy in the eyes of just the college football world and trying to make rules to curb like that small minority of people versus what's best for all of college football. And that's what they've got to be careful of, in my opinion, is trying to make all these you know, changes or rules to curb things that really are only trying to affect like 15 to 20 players per year that are these big NIL getters. Um, when in reality, there's over a thousand players in the portal and like 900 something of those guys aren't getting big NIL money. Mm -hmm. And so, you know... Things shouldn't be be uh, changed dramatically just because of ten to fifteen to twenty guys in a pool of a thousand and you know two hundred. Uh, so it's a nice idea, but I just don't think that you know all of a sudden going back and now we're going to start making guys sit again. I just I, I don't think anybody's going to going to roll with that. I don't think that's going to have enough support, and I think they're going to have to continue to look for other ways to try and uh, stem this. Uh, you know, issue, but you know, there's also a lot of people that don't feel like it needs stemming. Like, I mean, the one thing he's trying to do is all of a sudden like put the cap back on and it's like, no, 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 that's not where we no, are now. You're no. not going to start taking things away. Uh, if anything, you're, you're just trying to hold on to some things, but that one you've already lost and you can't get it back. Yeah. It's not like, it's not like the NBA or NFL and negotiations between a union and a league uh, where you might have concessions that now student athletes don't have to give any concessions. Well, that, because, would, yeah. that would be something yeah. you'd have to negotiate with yeah. them. You know, if you want to get to that point to where all of a sudden we're doing collective bargaining agreements and all of that jazz, then, you know, that's something that maybe you throw out there of like, okay, if we're going to get this deal done, then you have to agree that everybody who transfers has to sit here. But like how many guys go and transfer to a school and then wouldn't even end up playing for that school?
Yeah. They just ride on athletic scholarship for a year, have to sit out. Oh, look, I've been in college for three years. I'm not even going to play here. I'm just going straight to the NFL. So then the school gets screwed over over that. They just basically foot a guy's bill to go to class, maybe, for a year and don't even get the benefit of them playing. I want to say Oklahoma had a guy do that uh, a few years ago. or, or some, I, I remember some instance where a guy got on campus, and I don't think he ever played. And maybe it wasn't Oklahoma, but seemed to recall something like well, that. Kentucky so, is a basketball player that entered. Well, yeah, they just had yeah, – never did play. Never played for yeah. them. So that's basically what you would run into, I think, in some cases with the at least the sophomores and juniors and, and those guys that would be transferring because it's not just freshmen either. Um, that that are doing this. This is everybody. This is fifth year seniors are getting their sixth year somewhere. So, yeah, I, I just don't see how going and resorting to the way it used to be is really going to be the answer to anything they're trying to do right now. And as far as Memphis, and, and I, I applaud Gary Barta for at least trying to come up with some solutions. And I know that there are probably some people who feel like that's a great idea. And and my comments aren't so much on whether it's a good idea or not. Uh, it's just that I don't think it's a workable idea. Um, but as far as Memphis goes, that's a really lo- nice looking facility. I mean, that looks incredible. Uh, my only time in Memphis was a stop at the airport to go to Tallahassee one time. And that's the only time I've ever spent there. But I've heard good things. I've heard bad things, too. Uh, but, you know, it's a cool city that uh, I would love to visit at some point, especially, you know, if they've got a stadium like that uh, hosting a football game. You know, in terms of does that get them and push them into a power conference in the next few years? I don't know, but it's a step forward. I don't know if that, you know, overcomes how much they would eat into TV money or distribution money. I mean, that's ultimately what's going to determine, okay, Memphis has got a great new stadium. Memphis has got a great fan base. Memphis is doing this and doing that. Now, if we add Memphis and we suddenly have a 14-team league because we also add so-and-so to make it an even number, are we going to make more money? Or are we going to make less money? And if the answer is we're going to make less money, then I'm sorry, Memphis or SMU or whoever, that's probably not the business move. Um, but, you know, for them to try and show that they can bring some money to the table, that's a start. That's a, that's something that, you know, I'm sure raises some eyebrows and makes people go, okay, cool. Uh, that's, that's some progress right there. So uh, I'd love to see Memphis continue it. That looks great. Uh, good for them. All right. Uh, Jay Spears, I, I don't know if you're from Memphis uh, – if you like Memphis, Jace, the Memphis facility is not nice. Y'all should visit the Liberty Bowl, bro. It is as bad as the, as Rice's. What we say the the artwork, it's those projections, the pictures of what it will look like. Just showed a brand yeah. new look yeah. redone stadium, and that's what we're talking that's what about. We're talking about. Calm down, man. D- d- take a deep breath on that. We understand. We've had guys who Greg Gaston. I just said it needs a had, coat of paint. We, we well, I just on. said it's a city yeah. with good things and some bad things. Yeah, like we're right. not we're not sitting there flossing, you know, or, or uh, glossing Memphis up or anything like that. That new stadium that they just showed looks pretty cool. Yeah, but you know, we'll see. The renovated stadium. Um, now 